but we have car brakes. We got a crew that was uh, working at the Rite Aid at 2750 Boston Road, which is up in the, um, Sector Henry, um, Bronx, Bronx Park East. Uh, how it worked was they would watch you go into the parking lot, park your car, go into uh, the Rite Aid, and one guy would follow you in and stay in communication with his partner who was outside breaking into your car, and then they would get jump in a white van and they'd take off. We do have one individual uh, identified. This pattern uh, stretches up into the 47 and 45. Uh, Westchester County is looking into this as well. That big uh, of a deal. Uh, you can make a lot of money off these car breaks. Um, so we're working on that. Um, we also have another car break pattern going on up in uh, the Chuck E. Cheese Planet Fitness at 1816, 1820, uh, Gone Hill Road. Um, same thing. Um, again, it's a crime of opportunities. It's valuable, so I'm in, I'm in plain sight. Um, then uh, I, I spoke about the residential uh, burglary pattern down in, uh, we have got two going on down in the Van Ness area. That's Melville Street, Barnes Avenue, Bronxdale, the 1900 blocks. Um, and Sector Adam is ground zero for my burglaries right now. I have a plan in place. I have officers that are working the overnight uh, until we catch that one individual that's wanted and get the other two that uh, I believe are responsible for these burglaries. Um, and then I have another uh, burglary pattern in the Van Ness area, Van Ness Avenue and Unionport Road. There's two instances on that. And then lastly, as far as patterns, I have a, a, a robbery pattern up in the 2700 block Colden, uh, robbery pattern up there, uh, two males, uh, uh, doing uh, strong arm robberies up at the 2700 block of Cola, Bronx Park East up there. Allerton. Um, Allerton, it's not Bronx Park East. Okay, Allerton, sorry. Excuse me. Allerton. Strong arm robberies by force, physical force, they, uh, they take your property, physical force, no weapons. Um, so that leads me into a, a couple of, I guess, uh, crimes that uh, hit the media or concern or I'm getting a lot of questions about. First one, that one is that, uh, I guess, Ch Channel 11 News report on or the New York Post and you know, on Newsday, 2802 Oldville, that robbery with the delivery man. Um, you see it was a brutal beating. Uh, male, female team. They beat him down in the lobby. He was captured on film and it was put, in, uh, put out in the news. Uh, then they take his property. Um, when we release it to the media requesting information, um, we did receive tips. We have these people tentatively identified. Problem is we need the CD to come in and uh, uh, ID these people now. Um, just look, at it, it concerns me and angers me to see that robbery. Um, there is some talk that there may have been some association between the victim and the perpetrator prior. So there was association before. You gotta vet that out to see if that's true. Uh, it may have, may or not have been a random robbery, let's put it that way. Um, we have to look that out, we gotta get the CD in. Unfortunately, uh, uh, there was a lot of people uh, looking to talk to him and uh, interview them themselves, and that spooked them. And now we're having a hard time uh, contacting him. But we, we have a good idea who these individuals are, and uh, we anticipate making an arrest on that one. The other one that was concerning was uh, 1520 Paulding, uh, the home evasion. Uh, I'm sure you heard about that one, where the uh, three individuals posed as ACS workers. Uh, they uh, entered a, a residence uh, where the mother Five-year-old son and 12-year-old daughter, or vice versa, uh, are present inside the home. Uh, they take out guns. Uh, they're wearing CSI hats on, on their heads. Um, what happens is an alert neighbor uh, screams and calls police. Before they can remove anything, they flee in a car, a Honda. Uh, 49 Precinct does an excellent job uh, transmit what we call level one uh, uh, alarm which is read uh, throughout the borough. Um, alert officers from PSA 8 on patrol on the 4-3 precinct. Different division from us. Here's the level one. 
they see the vehicle, um, the occupants are getting out of the vehicle, they stop them, um, show up is conducted, these individuals are identified, arrested inside the car, the hats, the firearm. Um, so it was a great arrest. It was a great job by the uh, um, PSA 8. Um, like all home invasions, home invasions get uh, um, investigated by um, Central Robbery Division. Central Robbery uh, uh, enhances it and, and unlikes it for some other cases. Um, so moving on. Some of the plan enforcement and some of the complaints I'm seeing. Um, I'm getting a lot of community complaints about tow truck drivers. Um, what we call predatory tows. Um, individuals who are uh, not following DCA uh, guidelines, taking tow trucks. Um, uh, I mean, taking vehicles and charging uh, large amounts that um, are not right, are not within guidelines. Um, not having tow licenses, things of that nature. So we are um, we are uh, focusing enforcement on illegal tows and predatory tows. Uh, we've made some strides in, in the past week and a half. Um, so um, I anticipate that continuing until these uh, tow trucks uh, operate in a, in a legal manner. Um, also, we're looking at speed enforcement on Boston Road, um, Boston Road and Allison Avenue. Uh, we had two fatalities in a year. One was an elderly female uh, crossing the mid-block, and then the other one was a DWI on Boston Road. Um, so we will be doing uh, enforcement in that area. Um, and we do have, uh, we're going to focus enforcement on e-bikes. I'm getting a lot of complaints on these e-bikes. Um, recklessly driving up and down the road, so we plan on doing that. Um, and then lastly, we have a graffiti initiative uh, that will be uh, um, will be uh, kicking off probably in about a month. But uh, overall, 2017. Again, I say this: I don't, I don't think I can lose. Not with this community. Not with this. Not with these officers. Um, they're, they're just outstanding. Um, Someone was looking out for me. I, I say this either up above or downtown. They gave me the 49 precinct. Um, I really believe that. Uh, I, just, I see great things and I, I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. An NCO command. You mentioned it. Yeah. So the NCO command is. Uh, yeah, it's Neighborhood Coordinating Officer Command. So basically how it would work would be this. The command would, right now the command is, uh, um, is broken down into nine sectors. It would probably, I would say, restructure, restructure this command into four sectors. And then there would be two Neighborhood Coordinating Officers assigned to each sector. Those officers, their responsibilities would be to make contact, make personal relationships with the residents and the business owner of each sector. It's one, to strengthen ties with the community. Two, to learn the issues or problems you're having. Um, three, to gather their intelligence. Um, learn about uh, who's driving the crime. Learn about uh, who's causing the problems in your area. You'll have personal contacts. You'll have phone numbers and emails to communicate with these officers. And again, most importantly, it strengthens the ties. It's almost like the old school way. You know the guy, and you know your officer on the block. Um, so that's a great thing. And then what would happen is there would be sector cars that would backed up, that would actually be responding to jobs, and then they would uh, act in a similar fashion as an NCO officer for like three hours or four hours uh, off the clock. Um, but the majority of their time or half of their time would be spent answering radio runs. And then backing those guys up would be response autos uh, that would be strictly handling all precinct assignments and, and, and radio runs and calls for help. Um, the NCO officers would be pushing any information you gave them to the sector uh, cars, say, hey, listen, the residents are complaining about this issue, that issue, this issue, or... I'm noticing when I'm looking at the crime trends in sector Adam, 
this is going on. This guy's wanted. So they're almost like the intelligence officer. They're providing the information to the, to the officers uh, on the ground. Um, so it's a multifaceted, you know, you can't just have a single approach. The officer's got to be uh, multifaceted. They, they have to be, uh, um, they got to be the community affairs officer. They got to be the intel officer. They got to be the traffic safety officer that does the enforcement for, for movers. They got to be um, multi, yeah, domestic violence. They got to be, you know, uh, multifaceted. They can't be just specifically, I answer radio runs and I write reports. It's not, it's not the way it works anymore. Um, it's, it's a great idea. Uh, I came from a 4 precinct where um, uh, that was an NTO command, so I got a, a good working knowledge of it. Um, so I, I think it's going to work really well here, especially with this community. Um, I, 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 I must compliment you. Some of the, the best crimes or some of the best arrests we've made in, in, this, uh, in this command is because you, community, has helped us. Um, straight up. Um, so, I mean, we made some good ones, but not as good as the ones you guys made. And uh, without your help, we can't do this job. Um, so, that's that's what an NCO can do. Thank you. Hi, Captain. Um, you've heard this before, and you're going to hear it from me many, many more times. And so we and David. Jay. And Jay. Both of you. I'm not leaving anybody out. Um, we requested... Um, a uniformed officer for clean halls, clean sweep, or clean whatever you want to call it. It's very important for the people that hang out in our multi-family buildings to see a uniformed officer. We've had it before. Crime was very low in our buildings. They don't come in to hang out because they know if I tell them there's a cop on the premises, they know that I'm not kidding them. There is a cop on the premises. All right, I would like to know if that's going to be reinstated. We filled out the forms, we gave you the keys, and we got nothing. The other thing is the graffiti. If we wait another month, you're not going to have a clean brick on my again you to paint. It's going to be everything. Well, we, wow. as far as the graffiti, we've got to wait until it warms up while we do these, uh, these initiatives. So, give us a month. Uh, we've already started uh, drawing up the, uh, the areas or writing out the complaint reports of where we're going to clean up this graffiti. <laughs> Sector David, Palm Park South is probably one of the biggest areas we're going to be cleaning up. Um, there will be other areas that we clean up as well, but um, a large majority of them, I think, 29 of them, I think, was down in Palm Park South. Um, and your other question in regards to trespass affidavit program. Um, if you have a... Uh, an active problem or a condition in your building that needs to be addressed. Um, uh, work with your landlords, get the get the building um, signed up in, the, in a clean homes program or a trespass affidavit program uh, with us, and we'll add it uh, to the buildings that we patrol. And we'll we'll, we'll, we'll uh, patrol those buildings uh, more frequently. I had filled out the application more than six months ago and given the key to the offices. So I'm not going to do another application in census. No, no, no. Every six months we have to renew the applications. But, but if, if you have one on file, okay. If you have one on file, yes. Then is it on file? Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Then we'll be there. Okay. okay. Hi, Captain. Um, I'm Linda White. I'm for the youth committee as well, or for the board as well as a Venice resident. Um, files. What can, be done? what can be done about pedophiles? I understand we have our limits, but we have two spots in Van Ness where it appears that the absentee homeowner is allowing corrections to use these as halfway houses. I've got five people in one house and three in another. And we have a lot of children, and there's a lot of children in Board 11, but down that way, I can tell you, as soon as it gets warm enough for everybody to be out, you're gonna see four or 500 kids, uh, start of in nose, that is a, a kid hangout. Is there anything, I realize they may have to break the law, but why are they targeting <coughs> us, and why all in one house? Can you help me? I'm not familiar, are you saying registered sex offenders? Out of yes, locations. sir, and some of them are high class. We're talking okay. about some serious stuff. 
They're not they're not across from a park or have a visual on a school. Some are, and Linda, I, I understand the uh, frustration and I get it. I understand the frustration and I get it. And we have registered now in the 49 precinct 197 registered sex offenders uh, that live in the confines of the 49 precinct. I know it sounds terrible. They have a, they have to have a place to live as well. This is what we're told from the sex monitor, uh, sex offender monitoring unit mm -hmm. through uh, NYPD. I understand, I know some elected officials we discussed it with. This was a couple of years ago, and I know they're supposed to be doing something with regards to that. Um, maybe that's something that we just have to revisit as, revisit as well. But just, just to let you guys know, our 197 sex offenders, we monitor them. It's a monitoring bi-yearly um, system that we have in place that we you know don't visit them, but we have, they're required by law to, give us certain information with regards to what, if, where they work, the types of vehicles that they are registered, um, that they have, and where they work, registered, uh, if they're in school, and there's something else. Uh, if they move, if they move out of the confines of the 4-9, or if we get any new ones, which we haven't, which is good, um, we haven't within the last past three years, haven't had any new registered sex offenders in our command um, to move into our command. Okay, um, so, this yeah. house became started packing up in the later part of 2016, and we have five. It was three, we got another one, and then just before Christmas we got a fifth one. And two of them roam the streets. Um, I'm off now, so I see them. They roam the streets, and they may be looking in your yard or whatever, but they're roaming the streets. They don't appear to be working. The other three, I see them go out and I come back. I think they actually have jobs. What's the address again? 1635 Van Buren and the 1700 block of Union Court. I'll get you the exact address. Yeah, and once you do that, I'll, I'll call you. Once I have that information, um, I'll contact, I'll do whatever we need to do on our part with the okay. um, help of obviously Because 520 Morris Park had one and he, le he left. The people made him very uncomfortable. Okay. All right, well, I have the address 1635 Van Buren. I'll get on it, all right? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think that's it for questions. Thank you very much, Commander. Okay, uh, we'll go back to the gallery. Uh, before we do, however, I do want to make note uh, for some of our um, um, gallery session speakers who are new to our meetings. Um, if you have issues like the vehicles without plates, without registration, aside from um, you know telling the information to us like we did now, if you have access to email, or if you just want to call the office, but it's always easier if you can just shoot us and the precinct an email, or shoot it to us, we'll get to the precinct. Particularly if you can get photos, otherwise just write down the information, um, this plate number, New York plate, New Jersey plate, black vehicle, all the details. So if you need, uh, if you need my email, Harriet has my cards. So you can email us that way. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Michelle Webb, New York State Nurses Association. Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm a registered nurse, and I'm working with New York State Nurses Association. I'm representing nurses in Jacoby Medical Center in North Central Bronx Hospital. And what I would like to bring to the community's attention is that um, there's a transformation of healthcare, and I'm sure you're all well aware of that. And in that transformation, it's perceived that children should largely be, which they should be, um, taking care of the community, but in that concept, they're considering, well, we shouldn't admit patients to the hospital, pediatric patients to the hospitals. We should limit that. But that may be appropriate in communities that you don't have the degree and the rate of asthma that exists here in the Bronx. And that might be okay for communities where you don't have the level of poverty that exists in the children here in the Bronx. So they can cast that concept, but it's not appropriate here, and that's what I would like to bring to your attention. What they're considering, and what they have done, is scale down pediatric services right there in Jacoby <laughs> Medical Center. That's your neighbor right there. There is the concept of a catchment area, so that patients are treated within the community that they live. So if patients who enter, well, maybe they won't even enter Jacoby Medical Center ER and the Beats ER, because they will not care for those patients that need um, airway support mechanical airway support, 
or let's say support of their vitals, um, like vital signs of blood pressure, and those patients would be transferred to where? To Montefiore Hospital. So that they've scaled down the pediatric ICU and that we don't want that to exist. We want it to be converted back to an ICU right now. It's a step down unit. We don't see that as fair treatment for the community and the children that exist, okay? We want them to live here in the Bronx. We don't want them to exist. We want them to thrive. And if that, if that exists where they have to be transferred across town, what happens to their healing when their parents can't get there? And it's going to cause suffering for their parents in, in so many ways. And then that will also, yes, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? No? Okay. Um, David Ockinson, your public library. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and greetings from the New York Public Library. Uh, I want to use my time tonight to let you know that the Revson Foundation is accepting nominations again this year until March 13th for the New York City Neighborhood Library Awards. We have three excellent libraries right here in this community board. The Allerton Library, the Morris Park Library, and the Pelham Parkway Van Ness Library, where I work. And I hope you will all uh, decide to nominate your favorite local library. Uh, the, um, the judges will choose first uh, 10 finalists, uh, and then out of those 10 finalists, they'll choose uh, six winners. Uh, the six winners will all receive $20,000 to spend on improvements for the libraries. The other four that, that don't make the final cut will receive $10,000. Uh, so uh, this, this will go a long way for, for all of our libraries to improve the already excellent service that, that we provide. Uh, what I want you to know is uh, that it's not about quantity, it's about quality in the nominations. Uh, so uh, they're looking for, uh, uh, for specific examples and personal stories. Uh, so uh, please uh, support your local library uh, and we'll continue supporting you. Thank you. Uh, and, and there are flyers. Uh, both about the, the Revson Awards and about our um, our upcoming events in uh, March uh, on the table over there. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, last but not least, Brian Adams. 29th Pension Community Council. Hello there. Good evening. How you doing? It's me. What's up? Um, I have an answer with, a, with um, you know, well, um, Warren's Island to um, um, the North End, the North End, North Lawn. <coughs> Warren's Avenue to um, White Plains Road on um, okay. down to, um, um, Pelham Parkway, Pelham Parkway, the Lawn. Um, have we got um, have we got a full, a full complete timetable of when it's going to be completed? Because, because I heard um, earlier this month or last month. They were um they were supposed to be completed this coming set um June or summer or even fall seventeen is it going to be um eighteen or nineteen okay. so uh, eighteen so uh, nineteen when is it going to be I, okay Brian so I think you're you're merging two issues right, right. you're talking about the current construction going yes, on yes current yes sir. And maybe you're talking about the, the bigger construction coming yeah. later. Yeah. So yes, it is. Okay. So thanks to um, Arlene, our Parks Committee chairperson, we had a meeting with Iris Rodriguez, the commissioner of uh, the Parks Department, Tony and I, and Arlene, yeah. and they're shooting for a completion date of Memorial Day. Memorial Day of when? Of Se this Se year. Se for the, in, the current construction, interior construction. In terms of the, I cannot wait for this. I cannot wait for this. Thank it's you. Oh, good. Okay, Brian, your mic's off. Thank you. So, it's cute. the other thing, the other, the reconstruction project, the whole thing from Palm Parkway, one end to the other, you have to speak to John Fredda. John Fredda? Okay. Yes. Okay. Let He's at the know, office please. tomorrow. Let me know, please. Thank okay. you. Have a good day. Thank you, Brian. Right. So, that closes our gallery session. We will now move on to elected officials. You also have only two minutes, like official reps, I'm sorry. You only have two minutes. Uh, Tom Lucanian for our President's Office. Good evening, everyone. First of all, uh, thank you for uh, being here this evening, both uh, those members of the board and the public. Uh, today was the Borough President's uh, State of the Borough Address for those who were there. Uh, we had the opportunity to hear the borough president speak about many of the successes uh, 
over these last eight years, particularly this last year, as well as the challenges that remain not only in this borough but citywide. Uh, the speech uh, will be on our website if you want to read the entire speech, as well as uh, available on BronxNet uh, as it was uh, broadcast uh, live on BronxNet uh, today, so some of you did have the opportunity to see it. Um, two other quick items that I'll share with you is that the borough president uh, of the Bronx, Ruben Diaz, and the borough president of Brooklyn, Eric Adams, uh, have put together a gifted and talented education task force. Yeah. And they're studying issues surrounding gifted and talented education in the Bronx, as well as in the admission processes for the city's specialized schools. As many of you may know, the Bronx High School of Science uh, is probably made up of less than 10% of Bronx uh, students. Most come from outside of the borough. So this task force will uh, work on opportunities in different ways that we can have more Bronx students become eligible, not only for Bronx Science, but for all the specialized schools uh, throughout the uh, city. And then finally, I know that uh, uh, mailboxes have been an issue for a number of boards throughout the, uh, throughout the borough, and um, the postmaster's office here in the Bronx will be attending uh, the March uh, borough cabinet, borough board meeting, to discuss ways that they are working to uh, eliminate uh, the fishing that's gone on. Um, there have been a number of arrests made, a couple last in the 43rd precinct, uh, regarding um, fishing, where they put uh, strings into the uh, mailboxes and use something sticky to remove. So that will be done at the March uh, for a board meeting. And then finally, just a rescheduling uh, of the African uh, American History Celebration, which was canceled on uh, the snow day, is March 10th, and the flyers are in the back. Okay, um, Luisa Benedetta, Richie Torres' office, Council Member Torres. Hi everyone, it's been a while. I hope everyone's having a great new year, great 2017. Um, so I have good news. I received correspondence today from DOT and they approved a speed bump located on Mead Street between Unionport Road and Garfield Street. So I'm very happy to announce that. I know Van Ness is really advocating for it. In addition, <coughs> is Urban Upbound still, still here? Okay, great. Urban Upbound also does work in our office. They provide free tax prep services. Please call us, make an appointment, 718-842-8100. And also with the commanding officer here who really highlighted the domestic violence cases happening here in the precinct. We can, hopefully you're not a victim, but you may know someone please give them our number because we could connect to DV counselors and we're happy to do so. Can meet in our office or we could set up space somewhere else. We'll be as flexible as we can be. In addition, we cleaned up graffiti in the following locations. 823 White Plains Road, 807 Morris Park Avenue, Kruger Avenue in Sagamore, and 685 Morris Park Avenue. That's basically it on my end. Any questions? No, we're good. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, Adam Bermudez, Councilmember King's office. How's everyone doing? Um, like uh, uh, Representative Councilman King, like Councilman Torres, we have uh, free tax prep at our office. There's some flyers over there. Um, unlike, unfortunately, Junior, I don't have a, I don't got a speed bump for you, but, you know, I wish I did. Um, we, uh, Councilman King is the library's chair, so I uh, echo what uh, Mr. Nuncomson said about, uh, you can't pick out any one branch, but please do fill out these for your local branch, and maybe they're going to get, you know, $10,000, $20,000. That, that goes a long way. Um, and uh, that's about it. I just realized before that this is my 10th. February CB11 meeting. Wow. It's been 10 years ago. I was once a reporter. That was my first meeting, and I, 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 I love coming here once a month. Like it's, you know, it's, 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 it's like home. So thanks for everybody. Um, Gina Klein, uh, Senator Klein's office. Hi. 
Hello everyone, it's a pleasure being here. I hope everyone's having a lovely evening. I just have a small announcement. Um, we are having a, fund a Fundamentals of gar Gardening class. We do it every year, but we're gonna um, be advertising for that as well. Um, the dates are Sunday, March 19th from 9.30 to 11 a.m. And then Sunday, March 26th from 9.30 to 11 a.m. And April 2nd from 9.30 to 11 a.m. We are taking reservations for this. It is at the Botanical Gardens. So um, if you would like to RSVP for this event, it's 718-817-8747. So if, and if you have any questions, you can always call me. Um, also, uh, this was brought up at a meeting um, that I attended to, and I know that there were some concerns regarding the unnamed street. I wanted to give you some updates um, we are reach, we reached out to the mayor's office in conjunction with Assemblyman Mark Jonay's office, and we should have an update for you guys um, as soon as possible. <coughs> but it's from my understanding that park alienation won't be needed. Oh, it won't be needed. But um, like I said, I'll have some more updates for you um, from the mayor's office as soon as we as soon as we get that. Okay, thank you. And if you want to reach me, it's seven one eight. 822 2049. Thank you. 718 822 2049. Hold on, Gina. Hold on. Gina, uh, can you coordinate with Jay? You know, the, the graffiti that, the, you know, with, uh, Tina was going to do something, and okay, so you could work with them, please. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, this would be in conjunction with them. Okay, yeah, fine. So, um, I wasn't sure, but yeah, I'm, we met, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. So this is for we're actually having a graffiti cleanup day. It's April twenty second. I mentioned it last meeting. This is in conjunction um, with Assemblyman Mark Jonai's office, but also with everyone that we can get help from. And we're looking for volunteers. <laughs> not, not that we're looking for your cadets. No, we absolutely, are, we are absolutely really volunteers, community leaders. We're looking to get everyone. Like I said, if you also locations, if you have locations, please send them over. We have we have already some a lot actually um, built up. Uh, so Tina, and getting back to the the, um, the alienation. In other words, you're saying we don't have to alienate it. So what's the next step? Is the city council? That's what I'm it's trying to figure bad. out. I'm tr we're trying to figure out um, what's that next step and what's. It might um, be the, the city process. council. Uh, it it may, be. but I want like I want to clarify with um, right. the mayor's office. Right, I appreciate that. And Perfect. by the way, thank you, uh, Loretto Park. The money we located the money from Klein, and uh, and they're going to try to expedite this money to uh, Parks Department. Okay, so I, where, where is it that located at? What's that? Agency, the state. Uh, it's dazzling. I don't know how to get <laughs> off, Tony. All right. Okay. All right, Sonny. Nice to see you, Sonny. <laughs> I feel like every meeting I have to okay. fight with them, which works. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, too. Thank you. Just remember, Sonny, you're up. You're up, but you only have two minutes. <laughs> no, it looks like half my job was done. Good evening, folks. Happy New Year to all of you who have not seen so far. Great to be here. What a great uh, February weather. I'm pretty sure everyone is enjoying it. Just a couple announcements. Obviously, you mentioned the uh, graffiti, so I'm going to piggyback it a little bit. We are doing it as community as one. So we are doing it in conjunction with the other elected officials, with our uh, precinct, and we are looking for some volunteers. If uh, you have anyone in your building who you'd like to get them out of their building and give them to us, we'll be happy to get their hands dirty. Our staff will be out there. I know the exporters are every year out there helping us out, and I thank you for that. Uh, one other announcement is Obviously, with everything that's going on lately, I don't want to get political, but we are having an immigration um, forum uh, April 6th. It is going to be in the neighborhood. If you guys could reach out, if you have anybody that has any concerns, there'll be plenty of individuals in there that you guys could ask questions, or they might be able to ask questions. I think it's a great place to get some answers, God forbid anything. I'm going to... I'm an immigrant myself, so I've been blessed to have those papers. 
Um, two concerns. Tony mentioned one of them. Tony, the money for Loretta Clark has been put aside. We're working with the governor's office and uh, Senator Klein, Assemblyman Benedetta, to get.